Hello everyone, I am Yashraj Gore and in this particular tutorial, we will be learning the basics of API testing with rest assured. API testing, as you are aware, is used to check the functionality, reliability, performance and the security of the programming interfaces. Rest assured is the library which helps us to write the powerful and maintainable tests for RESTful APIs. Using this combination of testing the APIs with REST Assured, we have designed a course for it. The first thing that we will be learning in API testing is the GET request in REST Assured. The GET request is used to fetch resources which are located on the server. We will be learning about them in this particular course. Once we have those particular resources, we need to confirm if those are the actual resources that we had requested to the server. In this case, we go for the verification of the resources. Following that, what we have is the POST request in REST Assured. The POST request is used to send data to the server and save it over there. Following this operation of GET request and POST request, what we have next is the authentication and authorization. Authentication and authorization are used to confirm the identity of the person and give authorized access to the person. We'll be starting the basic authentication in REST Assured as well as with bearer token authentication in REST Assured. Following the authentication and authorization, what we have next is the PUT request in REST Assured. The PUT request is used to update the resources which are located on the server. We'll be studying about them in greater details. Moving on, lastly, what we have is the delete request in the rest assured. The delete request in the rest assured is basically used to delete the resources which are located on the server. Having gone through all of this, we'll be following a particular format to make things simpler for us to learn and understand. Initially, we'll be using the Swagger tool to understand the HTTP request it will help us to learn about the API and its associated nuances. Having learnt about the API in HTTP request in Swagger, we'll try out the same HTTP request in the Postman tool. The Postman is an interactive tool which helps us to organize the request and the responses that we are receiving from the server and this helps us to learn the API behavior better. Having gained the knowledge of that particular API, and how to use it, we will try to write the code in REST Assured for the same request we initially started for. This is the approach we will be following in this journey for studying the basics of API testing with REST Assured. I welcome you all. Thank you. Hello guys. We will begin our tutorial today by understanding how a GET request works in Swagger. So let us understand first what exactly is Swagger. Swagger is a tool which provides a sandbox environment to study the APIs and their behavior. Swagger is a framework for describing the API by using a common language that is easy to read and understand. You can think of it as a blueprint for a house. You can use whatever building materials you like, but you can't step outside the parameters of the blueprint. So having a simple understanding of what Swagger is, let us look at how this Swagger tool works. Let us first navigate to Bookstore API Swagger document. The URL is mentioned on the slide here. Let us launch it in the browser. So here we are on a Swagger API documentation. It consists of two endpoints group, account and bookstore. For this tutorial, we will try out the get request for get books list. It is located under the bookstore endpoint store. Let's begin by clicking on get to expand it. Click try it out. Click execute button which will display us the results. Scrolling down we see that we got a 200 status code along with the response body. The response body contains a list of books that are available at the bookstore. It explains that a request was successfully sent over the server. As you can see, we received a list of books from the server. It is in JSON format. 
If we look just above the response section, we have the curl command included as part of the documentation. The curl is independent of the programming language. It consists of request header information. Additionally, it displays the request method, which is get in our case. Just below it, we have the request URL. It consists of the base URI path appended with the books endpoint. Moving down, we see a response header section. It consists of headers received from the server with response. Content type, care set, date, server, status, they all have been listed here. Thus, we realized that Swagger's implementation is simple and quite useful. It provides an interactive experience to send a request and receive a response for the APIs. To summarize, as software professionals, we need to understand the underpinnings on which great software is built. One of the many means is to try and test them over in various ways. Swagger is one of the tools which helps us to do that. Hello guys, today we are going to talk about get request in Postman. So far, we have studied how a get request works in Swagger. And in this tutorial, let us learn how the same get request works in Postman. To begin with, let us briefly understand what Postman is. Postman is a great tool when trying to dissect the RESTful APIs. It offers a sleek user interface to make the HTTP request. And that too, without the hassle of writing a bunch of code just to test an API's functionality. Postman started as a Chrome extension, but eventually it became very popular. And now it is a standalone desktop application. As we will explore Postman, you will realize that it provides a whole bunch of functionalities to test the APIs. And on top of it, it is very easy to get started with. All you have to do is to navigate to getpostman.com, download the application and install it. And you are ready to explore the APIs using Postman in no time. Simple, isn't it? Now, let's explore Postman. Once you start it up, this is what you will see. To write a GET request in Postman, let us start by creating a collection. The concept of grouping request is called collections and each collection is displayed under the collection tab. So we start with clicking on this create a collection button and I name it API tests. Once done, I click on create button. So here we have a collection created for us. Next we are going to add a request to it and to write a request I will name it as get request for bookstore and I will save it to API tests. I will close this particular suggestion and here we have the request created and as we know in the swagger document that we had used before for the bookstore API let us navigate that to first this is the same API that we had checked in the swagger tutorial and for this particular endpoint we are going to copy the request url for it so here i copy the url and i paste it in the request url box which is located right beside the get method and while we have many other methods available under the method drop down I will choose to keep get as it is because that's what our endpoint is about get and the associated request URL and next I click on the button send. Let us look at the status code. We have received 200 OK. Now different status codes have different meanings and in this scenario we have status 200 OK which means that the endpoint is correct as well as the server was able to provide results for our request. We will have some more status codes later. The colorful text inside that box below is the response from the server. If you observe closely above the response box, you will see that body tab has been selected. Body means you have selected to view the response body which has been shown inside the box. In body, you will see three key options. Pretty, raw, 
preview. In the pre tab, what we see is that the response is neatly formatted and it is very easy to read. Moving further to raw tab, what we see is that it is same as the pre except that it has no colors as well as without any indentation. Lastly, we have the preview tab, which is basically the tab rendering the preview of an HTML page. Some web servers return response in HTML format, which makes it easy to be consumed in certain scenarios. This tab is helpful to view such responses. In our case, we don't have any such requirement and hence we see it in a raw format. To summarize this particular tutorial, we began with a brief outline of the Postman tool. Next, we set up our API test by creating a collection and adding an API GET request to it. What we did next was basically copied the same request URL which we used in Swagger document and pasted it in the request URL box that we had right besides the method. I hope you were able to connect the dots of our GET request in Swagger tool with that in the Postman. Thank you. Hello guys, in this tutorial we will learn to write our first request with rest assured and while we are at it, we will understand the basics of a request code. Before we begin writing the code, let me give you a brief overview of what this rest assured library is all about. Rest assured is a Java library that provides a domain specific language for writing powerful maintainable tests for restful APIs. Rest assured is one of the most used library for REST API automation testing. REST Assured library behaves like a headless client to access REST web services. We can create highly customizable HTTP requests to send to the RESTful server. This enables us to test a wide variety of request combinations and in turn test different combinations of core business logic. REST Assured library also provides the ability to validate the HTTP responses received from the server. For example, we can verify the status code, status message, headers and even the body of a response. This makes rest assured a very flexible library which can be used for testing. So now that we have got familiar with the rest assured library, it's time to start assembling piece by piece the code to implement the same get request in the rest assured through our code. This get request is the same get request for books list we studied in Postman and Swagger tool. And before we begin writing our test, let us first know the dependencies we need to add for rest assured. So here you can see as I've displayed on the screen, my pom.xml and I have added two dependencies. Number one dependency is the rest assured dependency with the latest version being 4.3.0. And the next dependency that we are going to use is the JUnit dependency with the latest version being 5.6.2. Both of these repositories can be obtained at mavenrepository.com. You can simply copy it and paste it in your pom.xml. Now that we have learned about the dependencies to be added, it's time to learn about the rest assured class. So the starting point to a rest assured test is the rest assured class. We will use this class to create a request specification for a given endpoint. And to do that, let us get into our IDE and learn more about this class. Now to begin with, firstly, I will create a package under the src test folder and name it as requests. So here I am under src test java folder and I select package and I name it requests and I click finish and that creates a request package. Here we have the request package. I will create a class under it and name it as get request. I will also ask the IDE to stop the public static void main method for me, which will make things easier. And now I will begin by the rest assured class. So here I have the rest assured class and then I will call upon the static variable of base URI. I will assign the value of base URI path of the bookstore API to this particular variable. The rest assured class contains a static variable called base URI, which has been initialized to the default value of localhost. And hence, this line which uses a class called rest assured is set up to a request with the specified base URI. In our case, this base URI is httpbookstore.toolsqa.com. 
This is called the base URI because this is the root address of the resource. Now coming back to our io.restassured.restassured class. This class forms the basis of any kind of HTTP request that is required in the test. Some of the key features of this class are that it creates HTTP requests against a base URI. It supports creating requests for different HTTP methods such as get, put, post and several others. It makes HTTP communication with the server and passes on the request that we created in our test to the server. It also retrieves the response from the server. Alongside, it helps to validate the response received from the server. Now that we have grown familiar with the rest assured class, we move on to our next class, the request specification class. The request specification class represents a request. Here, the rest assured class that you are seeing in the code is returning the request against the base URI as specified in the previous line. Every request in the rest assured library is represented by an interface called request specification. This interface allows you to modify the request like adding headers or adding authentication details. The word specification at the end is used to signify how the request should look like when it is sent to the server. Now that we have understood what request specification class is all about, let's get back to our get request class that we created before and start writing the next steps to create an HTTP request. So here I am and as a next step, what I do is that I mention request specification, HTTP request and I assign it and I import the necessary class for it. What I did in this particular step is that I created an object of the type request specification which is nothing but HTTP request in our case and to this, the rest assured class will return the request against the base URI. This base URI was specified by us in the previous step when we wrote the code for defining the static variable of base URI. Now that the request specification object is there, it calls the server to get the resource. This piece of code tells request specification to issue a request to the server. Now that we have a request specification, we will make a actual request to the server and this can be achieved by calling the request method and the associated method type. To do that, let's move back to our code. So here we are, we move back to our get request code and write the code to obtain the response. We select the method and get is the method we will be using so i select that and i specify the uri to which the get request should access so we will use the same one which we use for our swagger tutorial and there we have it so in this code the request method returns a response object and let me introduce the import here we have the import so the request method returns a response object it represents the response obtained from the web server issuing request basically takes two types of takes two arguments number one is the http method type which is get in our case and then the second is the string argument where we pass the uri this step actually sends the request to the remote server and gets a response back. This is the reason why the return type of the request is specified as response. Now that we have received the response in our response object, it's time to study the HTTP response we are getting from the server. We will study about it in more details in the next video of this series. Hello guys, in this tutorial we are going to discuss the HTTP response in rest assured. And before we take a step further to understand what response is in the rest assured world, let us first understand and get a general idea what response stands for. Imagine a scenario. You are a customer. You approach a shopkeeper with the list of things that you want to buy along with the money required. And you hand them over to the shopkeeper. The shopkeeper on his end verifies the list of things that you have requested for along with the sum of money you have presented. 
he confirms if he has those things with him and once that is done he hands over those things to you and this is what we call as a transaction something similar happens in the restful world the client who requires a certain resources from the server creates a request and sends it out to the server the server on its end verifies the request and verifies if it has those resources which the client has requested for and once the verification is done it simply sends out a response to the client containing the resources the client had requested for and this is the response that we are going to study about for this tutorial having learned what a response is now it is time to connect with what we have learned so far in our postman request so let us navigate to postman application and see what's going around there we are in the postman application we have composed a request and assigned a get method to it when we hit the button send it goes to the server and it responds back with the resources that we are looking for so when i hit the button send we receive a response that is containing of the resources that we were looking for alongside what we receive are the headers which are nothing but the metadata or the information we receive from the server in regards to the response alongside we have is the status this status code signifies if the request was successfully sent or not we learned about the response in postman and now let us understand about it in the rest assured world in the rest assured world as we have in postman we have the status code we have the response headers and we have the response body and all of this combined together form the total response we receive from the server for the request we sent now all of these can be accessed through various methods and we are going to replicate the same in our rest assured world when we code for the request here we are in the rest assured world we started off initially by creating a base uri static variable and assigned the bookstore.toolsqa value to it after that what we did was we specified the kind of request we should be creating and once we have created that request we are sending it to the server and to do that action what we are doing is that we have called upon the request method where we have specified the method type which is get in our case we have specified the path to which the request is to be sent these two are the parameters that the request is basically looking forward for and what we get in return from the request that we have sent to the server is the response and the return type of this particular request method is the response as you can see i have highlighted we have created a variable of response to handle the response that we are create we are getting from the server another interesting thing about this particular request method is that it performs an http request to the server so it sends out a request to the server and this is similar to what we do in the postman application we click on the send button and it sends the request to the server let us see the methods that are working on this particular response object and if we can use any of those to extract the response header status code or the response body that we are looking for we will move ahead firstly with the status code because the status code determines if our request was successfully sent to the server and we received the response for the same to do that let's click response dot and we have a couple of methods populating over here in the suggestion box currently we are interested to look for get status code because that's what we are looking for so some a method which resembles to fetching status code will be useful for us when we scroll down this particular method options that we have to operate on the response object we see that we have this get status code method which basically returns the status code of the response we receive the return type of this status code is an integer and it is quite easy to map because the status codes that we receive range from 100 to 599 thus having an integer as a return type is quite logical next what we do is write this get status code method 
and assign an int variable to it which will store the value of the status code that we are receiving the status code that we have written is basically extracted from the response and it is one of the determinants if our request was successfully sent across to the server or not and next what we do for our test that we have composed so far is we print out the status code that we have extracted from the response we quickly run the test we run as java application response status code is 200 gets printed out in our console this response status code that we received which is 200 corresponds to the one we received in postman that is 200 this tells us that the request we have composed so far in our rest assured world is correct and it successfully sent the request to the server and the server responded back with a response status code 200 we can verify the other parts of the response such as headers and response body but for now the test that we have composed so far is successful is the message we got from this particular test hello guys in this tutorial i'm going to talk about the response headers in rest assured and in a previous tutorial we learned about the status code this time we are going to extract the response headers from the response we receive from the server and print them on the console of the application so let's just jump right into it what exactly are these response headers and why should we be curious about them the response headers that we receive from the server are the part of the response that is sent by the server and they are also referred as the metadata of the response every response that we receive from the server may contain zero or more headers and these headers are basically in form of key and value pair let me just show it in the postman we are in the postman application we have composed a get request and sent it out to the server the server responded back with a response body a status code and couple of headers these response headers are the additional information that is being conveyed by the server and they provide a more detailed context the headers that we receive are in key value pairs as we can see over here the key signifies the headers while the values signify each of the associated value with the respective header what we have over here is that the information icon i which gives us more information about that particular header and now what are exactly is the use of these headers and why do we need to know about them using the headers a client can take intelligent decisions like for example the header that we have over here is content type what it does is that it basically tells us how to interpret the data that is present in the body of the response the response body that we have received is in json format and thus the application json has been enlisted in the value similarly if the body that we received was in xml format we would have got application slash xml as a content type header likewise the headers convey additional information and now what we are going to do next is basically replicate these headers in our rest assured code and try to print them all on the console what we have done so far in the rest assured code is that we have written a request and we have retrieved the status code from the response next what we are going to do is print out the response headers from the response to do that let us see what all methods are available to operate as headers on the response object that we have created as a write header i get a couple of method options that are available to operate on the response object we have the foremost one get header which asks for a parameter of string and this particular parameter if we read in the intellisense what it says is that it is used to fetch out a single header value which is associated with the string name that we are passing like if we pass the content type 
we will receive application JSON as the value. Likewise, the next one we are getting is get headers, which is basically re returning to us the response headers. Right now, we are interested to print out all the headers that are available in the response, and thus we will select the get headers without specifying for a particular key or response header in our case. So I will select this one. After hovering over the get headers method, what we see is that the return type is headers. So I will create a variable to hold the headers that we are receiving from the response. As you can see, this particular headers is being suggested in the IntelliSense. So let us quickly import it. And what I do next is print out the headers by using sysout. I press control space and next I write headers for response R and simply invoke the variable. There we have it. I next run this as a Java application. And the headers get printed out in the console of the application. The intention is that verifying if the response headers that we receive are the same that we received in Postman. I'll take just one as an example. Like we have the content type as application JSON. The same is being observed in our Postman. And that is application JSON. This confirms that. The code that we had returned to retrieve the headers from the response is correct and it has fetched the headers which are corresponding to the ones we received in Postman. Hello guys, in this video tutorial we are going to talk about the response body with rest assured. We have mentioned response body several times in our former tutorials but this time we are going to go into the depths of what response body actually comprises of. And we are going to get it printed in our rest assured test. Let us first understand what this response body is. The response body contains the resource data that was requested by the client. The response body you could say is nothing but the HTTP message body which is sent by the server and it contains the data bytes which are transmitted by the server. Let us understand the response body in the Postman tool. We are in the Postman tool. We have created a GET request and sent it to the server to fetch certain resources. These resources involve the book list that we are looking for when we sent out the GET request. Next step, the server verifies if the request is alright and secondly if it has the necessary resources that we have requested for. Once these things are confirmed, the server sent out a response to us. It contained the status code the headers and the response body that we are seeing on the screen right now. This response body is in the form of a JSON body and it is a book list which contains books which have certain properties such as ISBN, title, subtitle and such others. At the moment what we are looking to do right now is extract the same response body from the response in the rest assured code and try to print it out on the console of the application. We are in the rest assured application. So far we have composed our request and printed out the status code as well as the headers that we extracted out from the response. Next our task will be to extract out the response body that we have received as a part of response and print it out on the console of the application. To do that Let's examine the methods that are available to operate on the same response object. We are looking to retrieve the response body and hence we need to invoke a method which operates on the response object and fetches us the response body. To do that we must first write the response object and based on that write a method which will help to fetch the body of the response. Let us start by get and here we have a suggestion which talks about get body which is the first option here and if we read in the IntelliSense what it does is that it returns the response body. Since this is exactly the thing that we have been looking for let me simply select it and here we have it written 
once we hover over it what we see is that it has a return type of response body and hence we must write a variable which will be able to hold the response body being returned as a part of a response i have not imported the library over here let me quickly import it the response body next since our response body is being stored in the body variable it's time to print it out on the console so we write response body is and next i write body as the response body also has a interface method which is called as string so i'll make a use of it and invoke as string which will help to convert the response body into its string representation and print it out on the console i run the application as a java application and maximize the screen here we have it the response body has got printed out over here which is in json format and since as you can see it is stretching out all across the console i think there is a better way to handle it so let us do it in a more efficient way i will comment out this particular line and we have the body object this is an interesting method that is pretty print what it does basically when we read in the intellisense is that it prints out it returns the body as a string and further reading tells us that it is useful for debugging purposes when we are writing the test and it is possible for content type which are json xml or html since the content type that we have received as a part of response body is in json it will be useful for us so i simply select pretty print and now i will trigger the test again i run as a java application and there we see it has got printed out in a better format and much readable than the previous output there i have maximized the screen and you can see it has printed out in a better format listing out all the books that we had initially requested the server to list out to us so thus we have sent out a rest assured request to the server to fetch us a list of books and among the resources that the server sent out to us was the response body which we were able to extract out from the response and print it out on the console hello guys now that we have printed out our status code the response headers and the response body it's time to verify the status code in rest assured i have navigated back to the rest assured code so far we have created a request and sent it to the server we received a response for it we retrieved the status code the headers and the body from the response we received and after retrieving the status code headers as well as the body what we went next was to print out each of them individually and now what we are going to do next is basically go on to assert them why do we need to assert them is to validate if the status code that we are receiving from the server is the one that we are actually expecting when we write our tests it is very important for us to validate these status code headers or the body that we are receiving as a part of our test and hence it is important to understand how these assertions work to understand these assertions what we will be using is the junit dependency we have already imported it it is the latest dependency with the version 5.6.2 and that's what we are going to use for our assertions we will initially comment out the code we have written for printouts since we no longer need them and there i have commented it out my next step will be involving invoking the assertions class this assertions class is a utility which 
will uh, which contains the assertion methods that we need for our testing we are using the assert equals method which is available in the assertions class and we will be comparing our expected output which is 200 that is the status code that we are expecting from our test with the one that we get from the server we have already captured the status code from of the response in our status code variable so let's use that one we have finished writing the assertion code to test if the status code is the one that we are expecting from the server and next we will run this code one thing to note over here is that if the assertion fails an error will be printed out in the console of the application i run as java application and there we see we did not receive any error and the code got executed successfully this proves to us that the status code we received from the response is the one that is equivalent to 200 the one that we were expecting now that we have verified the assertions pass when we have the same expected and the actual outcome it's time to try out a negative case and see if the assertions work in a negative case as well and to do that i will quickly change the resource url I will write some random value over here. Ideally, I should be expecting is that error is thrown in the console for the failed assertion. I run the code again. And there it shows that the error is thrown in the console where the expected value was 200. But of course, it received a 404 that is not found because this particular resource URL that I am hitting to with my request is not available on the server this confirms that the assertion code we have returned to assert the status code we receive as a form of response is correct and at the same time if there is any change in the status code we receive from the server the assertion fails giving us an error message in the console hello guys so far we have asserted the status code we received as a part of the response from the server and now it's time to verify the response headers we get in our code that is in rest assured. Before we move on to write uh, the rest assured code, we must first understand the things that we intend to verify. As we will be verifying the response headers, the first thing that we will be verifying are the header count. The header count is 5 as we see over here in the postman tool and that's the one that we will be verifying as a first means to verify the response headers. The second one that comes after it is the key value pairs that we see for the headers. Like we have several of the headers displayed under keys and their respective values. What we want to verify is a particular key like let's say content type has the value which is application JSON in a rest assured code as well. We are in our rest assured code. So far we have asserted if the status code we received from the response is equivalent to the one that we expected which was 200 our next step will be to verify the response headers that we are getting from the response let me remove the code that we do not need to verify the response headers similarly i will restore the api that we initially wanted to test in the get headers method we are getting a list of headers which are nothing but the response headers we get from the response and we are storing them in the headers variable that we have created of the type headers. Our next step will be to verify the count of the headers. And then we will be verifying if a one particular header is the one that we are expecting. But for the first scenario, that is the count of the headers, let me see what all methods are available so that I get the total count of the headers. So I write the headers variable. I go on to see what all methods are there. We can see as list is available, which will help us out by listing all the headers that are available. Let me select that one. And as we know, since this is a type list, we will have a size method, which will give us the total number of elements that are present in that particular list. And 
the return type of this size is an integer which is good in our case because it will totally give us the number of headers that are present so i select this size method and now i want to store this particular size of the headers that we are getting into a variable as int is the return type i will leave it as int as a data type and let me call the variable as count of headers in the postman tool we had received totally five headers so the five should be the expected count when we are confirming if we are getting all the headers in our rest assured code let me start by writing the same assertions and i write assert equals our expected value will be 5 because we just checked in the postman right now 5 is the total number of headers we are getting in postman and that's the one we are trying to replicate in our rest assured code while the actual value will be equivalent to the count of headers let me copy it and paste it in the expected section for assert equals method having done that i will now trigger the test once the tests are run if there is an error in the count it will get printed out in the console of the application and if an error is not printed out what it means is that our test ran successfully and the expected value matched with the actual value that we got from the response here i click java application and the test ran successfully without any error being printed out in the console this confirms to us that the header count that we got from the response is equivalent to 5 which is the expected value we had this was the first stage of our assertion we will now move on to our next stage we are in the second stage of our verification for response headers this time we will be verifying the response header value we begin by invoking the response object and once again we will see what all methods are there for the particular header value and as you can see the first method that gets populated get header what it does is that it accepts a string parameter and it returns the header value which is associated with the string parameter that we pass and if that particular header name is not found in the list of headers that it gets from the response it returns a null so for now we select that particular method and it requires me to pass a string parameter now in a postman we have received total five headers let's move back to postman and among these five headers the content type is an important one because it helps us to identify how a particular response from the server has to be interpreted so I select the content type and then list it under the get header as a parameter. Having done that, I see that the get header method has a return type string and it returns the header value. So let me simply create a variable of string type. And assign it to the get header with a content type my next step will involve if the particular header value we are getting from the response is equivalent to the one that we are expecting in our expected value the value that we will be writing will be the value we are getting in the postman that is application json care set utf8 thus i write assertion and then assert equals in the expected value i will be mentioning this particular value i copy it and paste it in the expected section and in the actual section we are expecting the header value we are getting from the response so i will copy this and paste it in the actual section having done that now i will 
run the test as a java application and if everything is all right no error message will be displayed in the console of the application and if there is an error likewise will be pasted in the console of the application logs so i click on run as java application so the tests have passed and now no error has been printed in the console of the application this signifies that the header value which was received from the response for content type is equal to application json char set utf8 this whole thing basically signifies that the headers have been verified in the terms of the fact that the header count matches for the assertion code we wrote also the assertion matches for a particular header value that we had selected hello guys Previously we have verified the response status as well as the response headers and now it's time to verify the response body we get from the response There are several ways in which we can verify the response body we receive from the server To keep the scope of the tutorial simple we will be verifying a part of the response body we received from the server and hence for that we will be following several steps Our very first step will be basically to extract the response body as a string and then we will go on to write the assertion statement for it. So let's get on with it. We will use the getBody method to extract the response body and a string method to extract the response body as a string. The return type will be a string object and hence let's write a variable to store the respect response body as a string. In this next step we will be writing the assertion statement to verify if the particular string is obtained in the response body or not. So we select the response body as string. and among the response body that we have received from the server let's pick the title of the first book for assertion our final step will involve running the application as a java application if everything is fine no error will be printed in the console of the application which will signify that we have been successfully able to verify the response and just in case if there is any error likewise will be printed in the console of the application so we run as java application and we received no error this signifies that we have been successfully able to verify the response body we received from the server hello guys previously we have learned about the get request and its associated validations and now it's time to understand the post request in the rest assured let us get started right away The first step in this direction will be to understand the post request basics. Consider a few examples. Many a times we have encountered a event registration form or a registration form where we fill in the details and go on to submit those details. And once these details are submitted, we get a confirmation message that the details saved successfully or details sent successfully. The action that's happening behind the scenes is that a post request gets formulated in which the data that we entered gets sent across to the server the server on its end goes on to save the data that it received as a form of a request and it returns a response stating that the request was successfully sent and data got created on the server similarly consider another example whenever we are trying to upload any image we go on to select those particular files or the image and go on to click the upload button what essentially is happening is that we are creating a post request in this process let us learn deeply about this particular post request and what it is all about what is this http post request the http post request is a type of request method and it is used to send data to the server which helps to create a resource on the server the data that we want to send in the form of a post request is sent as a request body in the http request we are composing 
Alongside, another thing to consider for us is that when we are sending the data to the server, the server needs to understand how the data needs to be interpreted as. And in this case, the content type header comes into play. When we are specifying the content type along with the value as application JSON or application XML, we are telling the server to interpret the data we are sending in the respective format. And thus, content type as well plays an important role when we are composing the HTTP requests. Moving on, we will understand this HTTP POST request with help of an example and this will help to clarify our POST request concept. So I am in the bookstore API tool and we will be using the POST method for account user. This API will help us to create a user. We have the method type as POST and this is the path to which the request is to be created. And this is the request body that needs to be sent across when we are composing the request. Let us navigate to the postman and use this same details and send a request to the server and see how it goes. So I am in the postman tool. I have the method selected as POST. I have the request URL composed with the path specified as account v1 user. We are going to send the request to the server. But before that, let's just specify the request body for it. So I select raw and I select JSON since that's the type we specify. I will copy the username and password JSON from the bookstore API tool and paste it here. Now for username, I will select a value. Let's take post underscore request 101 and same way I will specify the password as well. So I have set this password and I will hit the button send which will send the request to the server and create a response for me. The request got sent and what I received was a 201 created as status code. Alongside I got a user id, username and books in the response body. Thus we can say that the post request was successfully sent to the server and we were able to create a resource on the server with the username as post request 101 and password as specified over here. The same thing we are going to do in the rest assured as well. So let's check out the code in the rest assured and see how it goes. Hello everyone. In the previous tutorial, we learned about the post request basics and created a post request in the postman tool. This time we will do the same in the rest assured. Let us quickly move to the rest assured code. We are in the Eclipse ID and previously we composed a get request class with the main method containing our test. In the real life scenarios, in actual projects, we never do that and write the test in the main method itself. We have separate test classes and those test classes contain separate test methods which cater to the tests. With that in mind, we need to compose our post request with a separate test addressing creation of the user. Thus, we go to the request folder and we create a new class and call it post request. We click finish and the post request class has got created. Another thing to be noted over here is that in our pom.xml file, we have the rest assured dependency and the JUnit dependency. To launch our test, we need to add another dependency which will help in the execution of the test. So we move back to the browser and copy it from the Maven repository. The name of the dependency is JUnit Jupyter Engine. Thus, we select that particular dependency and paste it in our pom.xml file under the dependencies. You see it is not aligned. So let us quickly align it. We select Ctrl A and Ctrl I which will help us in alignment and save it as well. We move back to our post request class and start composing a post request method for it which will help us to create a user on the server. This is the request and this is the request body that we are sending along with our request. We create a method public void create user test 
and as this is a JUnit test, we will quickly add the add test annotation. We import the necessary annotation for it. The first step in composing a post request will be to specify the base URI. Since the base URI is the same as we used in get request, let us copy that. And use it for our post request method. The next step will be to specify the request payload that we need to send along with the request. The payload that we had used in Postman is basically to create a username and a password which has already got created on the server and hence if we are sending it again and again what we get in return is the message which is user already exists and a 406 as the status code. Thus we need to specify a new username and password for the post request we are composing but nonetheless we can still use the request body that we have over here. We have created a payload of string type and in that we will specify the request body we aim to send. Having done that, the third step will involve of specifying how the request is and what all it should contain. Thus, we will be using the same request specification we had specified in our get request. So let us copy that as well. In the request, we need to specify inside the header the way in which the server should interpret the request that we are sending. Since our request is in JSON format, we need to specify it in the header to interpret for the server. With that in mind, we use the HTTP request and we specify the header along with the header value. The header name is again content type while the value is application JSON. Basically by now, everything that we need to send in a request is there. We have the base URI, we have the payload and we have the request format in which it needs to be interpreted by the server. But there is another thing that is missing and that is the path to which the request needs to be sent across to. So we have to specify that in our next step. Thus we write as body because we will be specifying the body which needs to be sent across. And payload is the one that we want to send across in the request body and we need to post it to the specific path that is of account v1 user so we copy that and we paste it in the post uri thus we have created our request and specified the request body along with the path to which the request needs to be sent. Once this request gets sent to the server, the server on its end will verify the request and send across a response to us. This response needs to be captured in a response object. So let us do that. We need to create a variable of the response type to store the response we are receiving from the server. And thus with that in mind we write the variable. We will import the necessary package for it which is of response type. One of the determinants if the request was successful or not is the status code we receive from the server. In our case we are composing a post request which will basically create a user on the server. Now if the user is to be created on the server. The response we are expecting from the server is a 201 as the status code. The response we receive from the server needs to be extracted for the status code and with that in mind we will simply get the status code from the response. We have used the get status code method previously and that's the same one that we are using this time as well. And the return type is an integer so we will write an int variable to store it. We are supposed to create a username and password for a user and with that in mind the username and password specified here is already been created. Hence we need to create a unique username and password on the server for the respective user. 
So we will basically write post request post underscore request as the username and maybe specify post request at the rate one two three four five perhaps as the password which will make it simpler for us. The last step will be basically to print out the status code we are receiving as a response from the server to determine if we are getting the required HTTP status code. If we see in the list of HTTP status codes, the 201 specifies a success message and it denotes that the request has been fulfilled. Also, it resulted in the creation of a new resource and that's the one we are expecting from our response. And now we run this as a JUnit test. We received that the response status code is 201 which was the expected value. Thus, the post request was successfully sent to the server resulting in creation of a user. Thus, this is one of the many ways in which we can compose a post request. Hello guys, in this video tutorial, we are going to learn about authentication and authorization. Majority of the time, the REST APIs that we deal with are provided with the authentication and authorization means so that we will be able to access those APIs. So let's get started and dive in deep. Oftentimes the terms authentication and authorization are used interchangeably and hence it is important for us to take a brief overview of what authentication and authorization mean. Let us first begin with the authentication. Authentication is the process where we identify the person or the device. A common example in this regard will be the username and password with which we log into a website. When we enter the correct login information, what we do is that we let the website know number one that who we are and number two that it is actually us that is accessing the website. Basically, we end up validating to a system that it is being accessed by the right person. Speaking about authorization, authorization is the process to determine whether the authenticated user has the access to particular resources. It verifies your rights to grant you access to resources such as information, database, files, etc. Authorization usually comes after authentication. It confirms your privileges to perform a particular activity on the application or the system. In simple words, it basically means that you are giving a person some rights to do something or to access data in certain cases. Now that we have taken a brief overview of what authentication and authorization stand for, it's time to relate them to real world example to understand them better. So let's get started with it. Take an example of withdrawal of money from an ATM machine. When we approach the ATM machine, we swipe the card and we enter the secret code that is known just to us as an account holder. Once we have done that, the screen displays the account details and then there are various functions that we as account holder can perform. Basically, the first step that is swiping the card and entering the secret code is a means of authentication while the rest of the functions such as checking the account balance or withdrawal of money comes under the umbrella of authorization. That is, we as account holders are authorized to perform those particular functions. Having learned about authentication and authorization by means of an example of withdrawal of money from the ATM, now it's time to understand the differences between the two. And to do that, we will use the same example of withdrawal of money from the ATM. Speaking about authentication, what it does is that it confirms your identity to grant access to the system. Basically, when we are presenting the ATM card and the secret code to the ATM machine, we are establishing our identity to the machine. Speaking about authorization, what it does is that it determines whether you are authorized to access a part of the system. Basically, when you have presented the ATM card and the secret code, 
what it has done for you is that it has given you access to a part of a system and that is nothing but the bank account in your case. In case of authentication, it determines whether user is what he or she claims to be. Essentially, what you are doing is that you are proving your identity. And when it comes to the fact that once you have proven your identity under authentication, the next step is that it determines what the user can or cannot access. Essentially, the account holder is able to access only the account of which the ATM card and the secret code is linked to. The account user is not able to access to any other person's account details. And that is about authorization. Authentication is the first step to access the system. When we presented the ATM card as well as the secret code, it was the first step to access the ATM machine. Authorization follows after successful authentication. Basically, once the authentication was done for the ADM machine, we were able to access the account and do various operations on it. And thus, authorization follows after successful authentication. To summarize, we begin with the block of authentication, where we answer the important question, who are you? And we prove it by means of the identity. Once the identity gets confirmed, what we essentially go on to do is to the next block that is of authorization. Under the authorization, what we do is that we answer the important question, does this person have permission to access the requested resources? If the answer is positive to that particular question, then the user is permitted to access the resource. And this is the chain of authentication and authorization flow. Hello guys. In this video tutorial, we are going to study about the different types of authentication. So let's get started right away. There are various types of authentication that are available. As a part of this tutorial, we will be focusing on a few important ones. The first one we will learn about is the basic authentication. The basic authentication is a process for browser to request a username and a password. Once these are supplied, the resources are available for which the request has been sent for. And this username and a password is the first step to authenticate the user. In the basic authentication, we learnt about sending the username and password for every request we are making to the server. This is inconvenient and can be a security risk even if the transport is through secure HTTP. The client application must have those credentials stored without encryption to be able to send them with these requests. A popular solution to this problem is to create tokens. A token is a string that server generates for the client and it can be passed along inside an HTTP request. The next type of authentication we are going to learn about is the OAuth authentication. To begin at a high level, OAuth is neither an API or a service. It is basically an open standard for authorization and anyone can implement it. To talk more specifically, OAuth is a standard that apps can use to provide client applications with a secure delegated access. OAuth works over HTTPS and authorizes the devices, APIs, servers and applications with access tokens rather than the credentials. There are two versions of OAuth, OAuth 1.0 and OAuth 2.0. These specifications are completely different from one another and they cannot be used together. There is no backwards compatibility between them. So if you ask which one is more popular, the answer to that will be OAuth 2.0 is most widely used form of OAuth. We will learn about OAuth in due course of time, but right now it is not under the scope of this particular tutorial. Let us learn about the basic authentication in more details. So what is this basic HTTP authentication? As we discussed before, the credentials for an HTTP basic authentication scheme are transmitted in the form of user ID or password and they are encoded in the base64. Thinking about the security of basic authentication, the main challenge in passing the user ID and password over the network is that the base64 can be reverse encoded and 
This makes the basic authentication scheme insecure. The HTTPS or TLS protocols should be used in conjunction with the basic authentication. And without this additional security enhancement, basic authentication should not be used to protect sensitive or valuable information. In the basic HTTP authentication, the request that is sent to the server should contain a header having a key value pair in which the key is represented by authorization while the value is represented by the phrase basic and then the credentials. These credentials are base64 encoded. Having learned the basic authentication, it's time to try the same in Swagger and Postman tool. So right now we are in the Swagger tool and the scenario for which we will be trying the basic authentication is basically to add a book to a user account. We have this particular API which is a post method with the endpoint bookstore v1 books and we need to supply it with a user ID and an ISBN number for a book to add it to the book. Thus, let's go to the Postman tool and try to do it. We are in the Postman tool and let us click on this particular plus. Uh, we select post because that's the post request and we will mention the request URL over here. The next step we will do is to specify the basic authentication. To do that, click on the authorization and select the type as basic auth. In this, we have to specify the username and password. The username and password is a pre-known one that we have used previously and hence I will just right now enter it and enable the show password to make things simpler. This username and password is the same one which we can create in this particular API which is post account v1 user. Since I have already created it, I am using it right away. Having specified the basic authentication for the username and password, our next step will be to go to the headers tab. In the headers tab, the first one you see over here is authorization key which is a header name and it is supported by a value which is basic that is the phrase basic followed by the encoded version of the username and password that is the credentials we had sent across. The next step is to enter the request body over here. The request body is similar to the one that we have for the post request that is user id followed by collection of ISBNs. To make things easier I have already specified the ISBN as well as the user id. The last step is basically to click on the button send. We received the response from the server with the status as 201 that is the status code along with the response. The response you notice over here contains an ISBN as well as book and other details. Of course the ISBN is the one that we had requested for in the book details that got added to the account user for this particular user id which we had supplied previously. This basically exemplifies that the authorization or the basic authentication has worked for us which is the username and password which got in the encoded format and sent across in the header and the associated value and we received a successful response for it. So this explains our basic authentication case. The next authentication we will learn about is the bearer authentication. The name bearer authentication can be understood as an authentication which gives access to the resources to the bearer of the token. The bearer token is a cryptic string. It is usually generated by the server in response to the login request. The client must send this token in the authorization header when making request to the protected resources. The format in which it is framed is a key value pair where authorization is the key and bearer followed by token is the value. The bearer authentication scheme 
was originally created as a part of OAuth 2.0, but it is sometimes also used on its own. Similar to basic authentication, the bearer authentication should only be used over HTTPS protocol. To better understand the bearer token authentication, we will be making the use of Postman tool. And in conjunction to the Postman tool, we will be using the Swagger tool that we have for our API documentation. So let us first go to the Swagger tool and understand the APIs that we will be using for bearer token authentication demo. So we are in the Swagger tool documentation and we have this particular endpoint that is generate token endpoint with the post method it will generate a token for us once the token is generated we will pass the token in one of the apis over here that is a post request with books as the endpoint and it will help us to add a book to a user for which the token has been generated having understood that let us move back to the postman tool we have listed out the request URL over here with the post method and right now we need to add the request body over here. To write the request body, we will pick it from the swagger tool. We will copy this one and we will paste it in the section over here in the request body section. In the username, let us use the same username that we had used previously for basic authentication. and the password as well remains the same having done that let us now send the request to the server the server has sent us a response and the token has got generated let us copy this particular token for our future reference having copied the token the next request that we are going to do is basically to assign a book to the user we have the post request over here and we have the headers over here as i mentioned before of course we can pass the header with authorization as the key and bearer as the value followed by the token basically once i enable the authorization i can pass this bearer along with the token that has got generated for us there is another way to do it and for that when we go to the authorization option in the request builder and we select bearer token it makes it much easier for us in this particular token the one that we had printed or we had pasted over here has got already populated for us to add a book to the user we'll have to pass a request body Right now we have some pre-populated data that I had kept ready for this particular user ID which is the same as the username and password for which we are adding the book. The user ID is ready and among the list of ISBNs we had for various books I have picked an ISBN and kept it ready for the sake of this particular tutorial. And since everything is ready for us what I do is I simply click on the button send and it sends a request to the server and what we have received is that the token has expired so let me again send a new request and create a new token the token has got created let me copy this and then i will go back to the authorization in the bearer token what i'll do is i'll simply remove the old token and paste a new one Having done that, I will click on the button send once more and then we can see the request has got populated along with the book that has got added to the particular user. Thus, without using the username and password, we have been able to use the token and this token was used to add a book to the user. This essentially helps us understand the bearer token authentication in which the bearer token was sent to the server and adequately the action was performed on the server hello guys 
Having learned about basic authentication and token bearer authentication in the tools such as Swagger as well as the Postman, it's time to try out the same in the rest assured. So let's get started with basic authentication in the rest assured. We are in the Swagger tool for the bookstore API and the API that we had authenticated was the bookstore version 1 books with the post method. What we had done in the postman tool was basically specify the request method along with the request URL, pass the basic authentication along with username and password. Adequately we had response received in our response section with the status and rest of the things. Something similar we are going to try out in the rest assured. So let's get started. We are in the Eclipse ID and I have created an authentication class under the request package. In this particular class, we will be writing the test to authenticate the user using basic authentication. The first step in this direction will be to basically create an authenticate user test. And thus, we begin by invoking the add test annotation and start writing the test method. We will do the necessary imports. The next step will be to mention the base URI we will be requiring for this particular test. Since we have previously used it several times, so I will simply switch to the next class or the previous class that we had used and copy it from there. So this is going to be our base URI bookstoretoolsqa.com. The consecutive step after mentioning the base URI is to specify the request. We have specified the way our request will be with the request variable. The next step will be to specify the credentials we need to pass to the request and thus we will mention that right now. Credentials is the variable names that are selected. The username for us is tools QA test and password is test at the rate 123. So let me specify that. Notice that the username and password are separated by a colon as we had mentioned in a previous tutorial. At this juncture, we need to pass these credentials in an encoded format into the request header. But before that, let us try to understand why are we going for encoding. The encoding is used in authentication because we do not want our data to be transmitted directly over the network. We use Base64 particularly because it transmits the data into textual form and send it in an easier form such as HTML form data. Also, we can rely on the same 64 characters in any encoding language that we use. And thus, we use Base64 for encoding. Now, coming to the second part. We can create the Base64 encoded string in various ways. One of them could be through a third party website or we can simply rely on the built-in base64 class which will help us to encode to base64. So let's use the inbuilt base64 class. We begin by evoking the base64 class. There are several methods under base64 but currently we are interested in the encode base64 method. What it does is that it returns a byte array which contains the base64 characters in their UTF representation for the data that we want to encode into base64. Thus we select it and we know that the credentials is the data that we want to encode. We will convert these credentials into its byte format and thus use the getBytes method to convert this particular credentials into a byte format. Having done that the return type of encode base 64 is a byte array and thus we need to store it into a byte array.
we will name the variable for byte array as encoded credentials to make things simpler for our understanding. So basically the data that is the credentials will get converted into its byte format and get encoded. Once they are encoded, they get stored into this encoded credentials variable that we have created which is in the form of a byte array. We have received this particular encoded credentials into its byte array format and before we pass it to the header, we need to convert it into string format. Thus, we will typecast it to a string format. We'll copy the encoded credentials and paste it here. Thus, the string representation of the encoded credentials is available to us to pass it into a request header. Our next step will be to pass this particular encoded credentials as string into a request header. We have the request object that has been created. And in this, we pass the header along with the header name and header value. The first thing that we specify is the header name. In our case, as we have seen in our previous tutorial, the header name will be authorization while the header value will be basic plus the concatenated value of encoded credential which is in the string format. we are passing this particular encoded credential as string into the request header. To take a brief overview of what we have done so far, let us just compare the code we have written here in rest assured with the one in Postman. In the Postman, we have specified the basic authentication type along with the username and password as the credentials. Likewise, we have specified our credentials for username and password following that what we have done in postman in the headers is that we have specified the header name as authorization followed by the phrase basic and the encoded credentials for basic authentication something similar we have done over here where we have specified the request header with authorization as the header name followed by the word basic that is the phrase basic and then the encoded credentials which are passed as a string the next step what we had done was specify the request body in which we specified the user ID and the ISBN. Since we are trying to replicate if we will be able to send the book or not, we will just copy it and paste it as a payload for this particular request. Now if you notice in this particular payload we have got the escape characters like slash r slash n in several places along with slash double quote. These are the escape characters added by the ID automatically for us. Another thing over here is that the ISBN for this particular book has already been added or assigned to the user ID for over here and hence adding the same book will not be possible. Hence we will be adding another book from the list of books that we had over here under the API get book list which is bookstore v1 books. And here we have couple of books over here. I have selected one of the ISBN value from here and went on to write it in my payload over here as you can see. Thus we will move to the next step which is basically to compose our request and send it to the server. So let's get started with that. Now that we have the request payload our next step will be to basically tell the server of how the payload needs to be interpreted. Since we know that the payload should be, should be interpreted in a application JSON format, let's write that in the header. Hence we again invoke the request object and we select header in which we specify the content type. It 
it will be application json i'll remove this typo the next step in this direction will be to compose the request and send it to the server hence we start again by invoking the request object and then we pass along the request body in this case the request body will be the payload that we are sending so let's copy that and paste it having done that our next step will be to specify the uri path to which the request should be posted to thus we use the post method in the post uri we should be posting the path which is basically bookstore v1 books so let us copy that and paste it back in the uri for post having done that we have everything basically we need to send the request to the server we have the body we have the post uri we have the necessary headers that we need to send across the important one being basic authentication header followed by the way in which we want the request body to be interpreted as the return type of the post request will be the response and we will capture it right now in a response object let me add the necessary import for it now that we have got a response as we can see we had received a status of 201 something similar we are expecting from our response we are getting from the server hence we will write the necessary methods for it the first one being this out because we want to print out the result in our console thus response status code is followed by response dot we have the get status method as we have studied previously so let us quickly select that and next we can do is response dot pretty print which is this method everything looks all right to us let us quickly run the test and see if everything is all right and we get the necessary output in the console we run as j unit test the test has run successfully with an output let me simply maximize it we have been successfully able to add the book to the user account and the status response code is as expected 201 which was the same one we received over here in the postman we had received a 201 and similarly that's the response status code we have received for the rest assured code we wrote as well as we notice we have received two books over here the one that we added right now and of course the previous existing one that we had already added when we did the postman request this proves that the code we had written for basic authentication works fine and the response we received is as expected hello guys in our former tutorials we learned about the get request and post request now it's time to unravel the basics of put request so let's get started right away we will begin by understanding what a put request is consider a basic example when we are trying to update an information already present on the server for example updating a profile or maybe updating details of a resource what we are essentially engaging in is a put request the http put request basically creates a new resource in case it is not available on the server or in case it is available then it replaces the resource with a new resource that we are sending through a request payload let us study this put request with an example so i have logged into airbnb if i have to edit my date of birth in that case after editing and saving the details what we see is a put request let us see it in action so i go on the edit button and i update the value let us say i set it to 10 this time previously it was 4 and now i have updated it to 10 and i click on the button save right now you can see under the network tab in developer tools is that a put request has got fired along with the request details the request details are the date of birth which is basically 10th of December 1990 so these details have got populated in my request payload and for them I have received a response for it so this is essentially a put request in action wherein we update a resource that is located on the server with the new request payload that we are sending oftentimes the put request and the 
post request are confused and hence let us understand their differences speaking about the differences in put method and post method generally in practice we always use put method for update operations as we saw in the airbnb example we updated the birth date for the respective user and that resulted in a put operation we use a post method for create operation in the previous tutorial for post method what we saw was a create operation when we created a user for the bookstore the put method is add impotent thus if you send the same request multiple times it would result in single request modification no matter how many times we are sending the request but that is not the case when it comes to a post method a post method is not add impotent hence if you request n times then it would result in creation of n resources on the server the response of a put method cannot be cached and likewise is the case in post method as well the responses to a post method cannot be cached unless of course a cache control is implemented the representation of a put method involves mentioning the respective id to which the particular modification is to be made as you can see in the slide over here we have endpoint representation of a put method in the put method the method put is specified along with the uri and the respective id to which modification is to be done but so is not the case with post method in the endpoint you see here the post method along with the respective uri is mentioned and no specific id is mentioned as we are engaging in the operation of creation of the respective id itself when we are engaging in a post method so these are the differences between put method and post method now we are going to see put method in action in our swagger tool as well as postman we are in the swagger tool for the bookstore api by use of put request we are going to update a book that is available with the user account we are going to use this particular api for it we have the put method followed by the path which is bookstore v1 books and the isbn this isbn value is that of a book which the user already has and when we send the request body it is going to get replaced with the isbn value of the book that we are going to send along also you will notice that the user id is added to that particular request body this user id will ensure that the user id has the respective book and that's the one that gets replaced with the new isbn value that we are supplying in the request having learned all of this let us try this put request in the postman tool in the postman tool we have created a put method followed by the request url this request url consists about the base uri along with the path that we saw in the swagger tool so an isbn has been added as a path variable you can see the isbn value added over here this value is nothing but the isbn value of the book the user already has next we move to the authorization tab in the authorization tab we have selected the basic authentication followed by the username and password these are necessary to authenticate the user for which we are trying to replace the book with then we have the request headers where we have different set of headers and their respective values we have authorization as the header name and its value is also displayed over here with phrase basic along with encoded credentials that is the username and password that we had supplied previously in the authorization tab alongside we have a content type which is nothing but application json in our case what it means is that we will be supplying the request body in json format lastly we come to the request body which consists about the username and isbn this user id belongs to the user account for which we are sending the credentials that is the username and password secondly that we see over here another parameter is the isbn value this isbn value is that the one that we want the book to be replaced with now that everything in the request has been composed it's time to send the put request to the server and see how the server responds to us for the request hence we click on the send button the put request got sent to the server as we can see and the server has responded with a response the status code we have received for the request we sent is a 200 status code alongside we have received a response body wherein the book has got replaced 
with the one that we had sent in the request body. In the request body, we had mentioned an ISBN ending in 18 and that's the one that has got added for the user account with the username as tools QA test. Thus, this explains that the put request has got successfully sent to the server and we received a response as we expected. Hello guys, now that we learned about the put request and we tried it in the postman tool, it's time to try out the same put request in rest assured. So let's get started. We are in the Eclipse ID and I have already created a put request class containing a test method with the name update book test. In this update book test, we will be writing our put request in rest assured. We start by mentioning the base URI that we need for the test as well as the request specification. Both of these we have written previously and it would be fruitful if we just copy it from the previous classes. Hence I navigate to the authentication class and copy it from there. Now that we have the base URI and the request, it's time to compose the request headers. We send the request headers to the server so that the server is able to process the request we are sending. We will be sending basically two headers. The first header will be about authentication where we will authenticate the user account that we are logging through and the second one will be content type which we want server to interpret our request body as. In the request header if you remember we had sent the header value as authorization and we had sent the value as the phrase basic along with the encoded the username and password. The username was test with the password and that got encoded as this string in the header value. The same thing we are going to do in rest assured. Thus we write request.header We mention the header name as authorization and we can copy the header value from the postman tool itself. Now that we have basic authentication clarified, the next header that we need to send along is content type. So we have specified the headers. Now it's time to write request body that we need to send along. If you remember in postman tool we had sent the request body with the user id and ISBN. So we are going to reuse the same. So let me copy that. A small thing that I wanted to touch upon is the path variable value that we are passing the ISBN. As you can see it is followed by a colon and ISBN. The same one if we were to just copy it from the value of the ISBN and paste it in the request URI it would just work the same. As you can see the path variable here vanished and if we were to send the request it would still work the same. That being said we can proceed with a rest assured code for the request body. Now the next step will be to compose a request to send to the server. So we start by invoking the request object that we have and call upon body method to mention the request body we need to send along with the request. In our case the request body will be the placement details that we wish to send along which contains the user id and ISBN. Next we need to specify the path to which we want to send the request to. And since we are writing the put request, so we will select the put method along with the URI as a parameter. In the parameter for URI, we need to mention the part of the request that we need to send along. In this case, it will be bookstore version 1 books for us along with the ISBN ID which the user already has. Now that we have composed request with request body along with path to which the request should be sent to. We will now capture the response we are receiving from the server in a response object. We will be capturing the response we receive in the replace books response object. We do the necessary import. 
in the put request that we have composed the book id that the user already has that is the one ending in 62 will get replaced by the replacement details we are sending for the respective user id another thing to note over here in the response received from the server when it comes to put request is that when it sends a status code of 204 what it does is that it does not send along content with it it just sends a successful message to us in the form of status code that is 204 if it sends a status code of 200 which we saw in our postman request as you can see over here we received a content along with it which is basically the response body wherein the updated value is mentioned here with the ISBN as you can see here for that particular user ID and lastly if the details that we had sent along in the request were not correct then we get 400 as the status code that is indicating that the data we had supplied was invalid so these are the various status codes that are received in a put request which you can see in the implementation for this particular API we are getting a 200 status along with the content having understood this let us move back to our rest assured code and write down the remaining part of the code this is the response object that we have composed right now let us write an assertion and confirm if we are getting a 200 status code in the expected value for us it will be 200 since that's the status code that we are expecting and the actual value will be basically the response object followed by get status code method which will derive the status code we are receiving in the response lastly let us simply print out the response we are receiving from the server which will help us to understand the response we are getting is the one that we are desiring thus we use the pretty print method having done all of this to ensure that everything we have done is right we need to run the test and see how it goes so let us run this as a JUnit test there we see the response has passed let me maximize it there we see that this particular book ending in 18 has got added to the user ID of this with the username tools QA test and that indicates that the put request we had created with the rest assured has been successful and we got a success message as expected now that the put request got successfully executed one of the things that we missed on was the basic authentication for basic authentication we had copied it from the request header that is right over here the value we had copied and pasted it as a header value for our request but instead of doing that what we can do is create our own code and use it as a rest assured code to create an encoded string for basic authentication fortunately for us we have already done that when we created our authentication class in the basic authentication so right now what we are going to do is copy the same code snippet from authentication class and paste it as a part of this put request we go back to the authentication class as you can see this is the code snippet that we had used we had given the credentials and those got encoded once encoded they had passed as a header value something similar we are going to do in our put request so let us quickly copy them and paste it right after our request composition that is the request that we have over here now that we have done that we can see the header over here is getting redundant because we are passing the encoded credential already and we have to pass the content type so the redundant code will be removed right now and now we have our request ready with the encoded credential as string thus when we revisit the request what we have done is that we have composed the request supplied the credentials later on we have encoded those credentials and are passing as a basic authentication in our authorization header to confirm if everything we have done so far with the code changes is all right what we are going to do is save the class and run it as a JUnit test the test got executed it returned a successful message along with the response body as we had expected thus we can summarize that the put request has been successfully sent 
with the encoded credentials written in the code format instead of copying them from postman tool hello guys in the previous video we learned about the basics of delete request now it's time to try out the delete request in rest assured so let's get started we are in the eclipse id and i have created a delete request class under request package inside the delete request class i have created a test method with the name remove book from user this test method will be used to create a scenario of removing a book from the user and thus the delete book request scenario we begin by writing the base url and the request specification for this particular request Now that we have the base URI and the request in place, our next step will be to specify the book details of the user account that we want to delete. As we had done in the postman, we had specified the user ID and ISPN for the respective user account. Hence, we can use the same request body for composing our delete request. The next step will be to specify the request headers as we had done a similar operation in the put request we had specified the authentication as well as the content type headers likewise we are going to do for delete request hence we can copy it from the put request that we had already used so let us navigate to the put request class Thus, we have the credentials which get encoded into Base64 class and those are later on passed as a header value for the authorization header. The next step we need to do is compose the request. Since we have the request object, let us start with that. We will specify the request body using the body method. In our case, the request body is the remove book details that we have composed. So let us select that. And finally, we will use the delete method to call upon the delete request for our rest assured code. The delete method takes a URI as a parameter. This URI will be the path that we want to send to the request. We can copy it from the postman tool. Our request has got composed. Now let us capture the response we are receiving from the request. We'll import the necessary response package. Now that we have it, why not simply print out the response we are getting for the status code. Another thing that we can do is write an assertion around the response status code we are receiving from the server. The expected value will be 204 since that's the one we had received in our postman request and the actual value will be the response status code we are receiving from the server. Hence we'll copy the code that we had written in the previous line as an actual value. Having everything composed so far, let us simply run the test as a JUnit test. The test has passed and it has returned a 204 status code, the same which we had received in the Postman tool. Thus, this explains that the code that we have written so far is alright and we have been able to successfully write the delete request in rest assured. 